I've got a piece of cardboard I cut out and I'm putting this motor on top of it to get the holes pattern lined up. I use a small drill bit here to pop these holes in. So welcome back to video three of the Dirt Sifto build. A lot of this video is going to be covering the motor install and then the final assembly of the dirt sifter itself. So uh, I hope you enjoy. I'm really hoping these are 3 8 holes and I'm thinking there might not be. Oh boy. They are not 3 8 holes. But you know what? I'm working on getting the shaker motor put in place where it belongs. And it does. So this is the shroud I'm talking about. Um, I just put one bin in it so far. And it, well, it'll go like this. cover up the shaker motor so when the dirt shakes down through the grates it'll hit this and fall off and not land on the shaker motor. The motor I actually put on backwards it needs to be mounted 180 out with the cord going that way. So I got this bent. I'm gonna go put another bend in it here this way. Actually, have it marked right there, that blue line. So I'll bend this down, and then this will sit over the top of that shaker motor. Right there. Protect it from the dirt, anything that might land on it. I'm getting ready to install a piece of steel, which... So I don't end up using this piece of steel that I'm about to show you in this clip. It turns out that I end up going with a piece of plastic electrical conduit or rubber excuse me electrical conduit and you'll see how I install that later however you are going to watch me use my oxyacetylene torch to burn a couple of holes and I find that to be pretty entertaining so I end up using the holes that I burn with the oxyacetylene but I don't end up using this piece of metal that it happens to made me a hand right here so uh, enjoy the uh, oxyacetylene I do uh, throw some sparks it's pretty fun You can see the far one is really nice and round and the pipe goes through there perfectly. It's kind of snug, no real slop in that. This other hole, this closer one, got a little bit of slop in it. I had a little burn through at the bottom, but nothing, I'll be able to tack it in place up high and just fill that in. I am working on wiring up this vibrator motor. Um, this is a shaker motor or vibrator motor. Like I said, you can buy these on Amazon. There's a weight in each side and they're opposing each other. So when this thing works, it shakes and it's gonna be mounted on that shaker table and hopefully shake it really well. I went to the store and tried to find a piece of this wire because this wire, in my case, this length of wire from the motor to this controller box is not long enough for my application. I couldn't find this, this the correct wire in this instance for that. So this is 16 gauge. Um, 16.4 is what this is. This has three conductors in the ground. Um, any case, but this is designed to work off of 110 plug-in. So that's why the capacitor is here. I hope that may, might make sense to some of you. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. Just know that you should have a grounded plug. See this? This is not grounded. I cut this off of my grinder. Let me show you my grinder real quick. Right here, Ryobi. I cut the cord off of, right there. Because this motor burned up and it's not worth it to me to replace the brushes inside of it. So, cut that cord off. But most power tools nowadays, most, most corded power tools nowadays are double insulated, which means they don't need a ground plug. This is not. This is a, a metal case. The wiring is inside of the top of this. 
That means it is not double insulated, which means it requires a ground plug. Now, I know that, and I'm gonna go buy one of those and wire it up correctly, but in the meantime, because I want to test a couple of things, and I haven't turned this thing on yet, I want to plug it in without a ground, and I know that's not right, but I don't care, and test it. I want to see how much it shakes, I want to see how, much, how well it works, I want to see if I can get away with some different type of wire, considering doing some kind of conduit wire on the shaker, and so on and so forth. In any case, I have cut off the plug from my grinder, and I have stripped the end of it, and I have wired it into this connector terminal. Had the instructions been in English, this would have been a lot easier, because they actually have instructions that talk about this, but they're not in English. So in any case, from all that I determined, hot to hot, neutral to hot, and I would normally have a ground wire coming out of this cable going into the ground, but I don't happen to have a plug with that. In any case, beside the point, I am gonna discharge the capacitor when I'm done with the video. I'm not gonna do that on the video because I don't wanna lead somebody down the wrong road and get them shocked. Now, I am gonna see how this works. So we have a big old huge capacitor. Everything's plugged in without the ground, but don't worry about that. I'm gonna put it on low speed. 120 volts, 60 hertz, max amps 15. I'm gonna turn it on variable. I can hear this motor working in there. It's trying to pull current. I'm gonna turn up the variable speed. And turn down the variable speed. Let's turn that off. Woo! Well, it works. <laughs> see it shaking around? That's what I wanted to see. Speed controller, that's pretty cool. Capacitor, uh, oh, I am going to immediately, I'm gonna turn you guys off and I am gonna go discharge this to ground. Um, like I said, I'm not showing that because I don't want people to, if you don't understand how to do that, you shouldn't try to do it. I'm watching me do it, it's not the right way to learn how to do it. So I'm gonna go discharge that capacitor and go to hardware store. After some deliberation, I have decided that I need to modify the way I was going to mount the shaker motor. You'll see as I, as I progress through this how it's going to work out. If for any reason you don't understand how a capacitor works, don't mess with one. It can shock the living crap out of you. This happens to be a 450 volt capacitor. Um, it's pretty big. You might see something bigger than this in like your, uh, right there. See that? This is a 450 volt capacitor. Uh, they're in digital cameras. They have even bigger ones in like heat pumps or furnaces. If you don't understand how a capacitor works, don't mess with them. They can shock you very, very badly. There we go. So there's the motor box all put together. I'm gonna to zoom you guys out. Okay, I got the, let me pull my earplugs out here so I don't talk really loud to you guys. I got the chains cut off here. And um, you can see that the table actually moves really well. And also got the chain pull out of the way so we have less stuff vibrating. Now this is sitting on concrete, right? And I noticed that the floor was gonna be an issue. So I'm only gonna do this for a couple of seconds, but I'm gonna have to put some pads on the bottom of the feet because otherwise the vibration from this thing will actually probably dig it. I mean, it'll dig into the dirt so far, it won't be useful. So we're gonna go ahead and turn it on. Well, it definitely vibrates. And it, it vibrates the whole freaking frame and everything. But I'm pretty happy with that so far. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the grates put back on and get those bolted down. Man, 
and there's one in the middle that I just can't reach, but it just so happens that my mom just showed up, so I'm gonna have her hold the wrench. So, that is great, all bolted down. So I got everything bolted down, I'm gonna turn it off for a couple of seconds and you'll see what it looks like. I had a couple of scrap pieces of steel lying around. Uh, two of these, I don't know what they were for, but they're unfortunately covered in galvanized, I realize that, that's why I'm trying to do this in a well ventilated area. But I'm gonna go ahead and cut these in half with my burning torch and then I have one here. And that I give me four, one for each foot. I'll clean them off and I'll weld them on the bottom of the feet. I went and picked myself up some 7018, which is a little easier to weld with, especially on flat surfaces. Top of 6011, but I'm having a hard time making that run uphill well. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to uh, 6011 and see a little bit smaller rod and see if I can get a better clean of bead with this. That is the first uh, kind of, I'll call it a shoot guide. It's to keep the dirt in the shaving table. So it should catch any dirt also. So, minus a couple of bolts, all the pieces of wood in place. Almost done. To, so the rocks will come down here and here and fall out on this side. And as that pile builds up, when you come in with the tractor, you'll have something to push against so that you're not pushing rocks into the clean dirt area. At least that's the idea. So that's it. Um, one of the things I noticed online is once dirt actually hits it, it, it really reduces the amount of extra vibration you get. For example, these wings are vibrating pretty hard. Um, once the dirt's sitting up against them, it'll reduce that type of vibration. So hopefully that'll help out and hopefully it'll work as well as I, as I hope it will. That's it. It's all done. So like I said, if you have any questions or comments, um, Leave a comment down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Otherwise, uh, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it.